Hello friends, welcome to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ILO Pathology. The topic I have chosen this time is uh, amyloidosis. Since this topic is quite vast, okay, I have decided to you know um, split into three different parts. In this part one of amyloidosis, the learning outcomes will be we will define what amyloidosis is, we will talk about the historical aspects of amyloidosis and then we will uh, concentrate mainly on the properties of these amyloid proteins. So we will discuss the physical property and then the chemical properties of amyloid proteins. Now coming to the definition of amyloidosis, amyloidosis is a condition associated with number of inherited and inflammatory disorders where there is deposition of predominantly extracellular fibrillar protein. Previously or classically, it used to be defined as deposition of extracellular fibrillar proteins only. But then now it is uh, found that the deposition is also intracellular. So that's why uh, now it is defined as deposition of predominantly extracellular fibrillar proteins okay so basically th this means that the most of the proteins which are deposited are extracellular and of course in a few instances there can be intracellular deposition as well so it is this extracellular fibrillar proteins which results in tissue damage and functional compromise now what are these uh, fibrillar proteins so these are basically aggregates of misfolded proteins now what do you mean by misfolded proteins See, we all know that uh, proteins are made up of chains of amino acids, isn't it? See, these chains fold into three-dimensional structures. And then folding is very important for protein function. So, uh, folding is a normal phenomenon, which is very important for the function of the proteins. Sometimes what happens, you know, after the formation of proteins, uh, some of these folds might release, okay, and then there will be abnormal foldings or misfolded proteins. So, whenever there is an abnormal folding or a misfolded protein, the normal function of protein is lost. Apart from that, the most important thing is that they are insoluble. Because they are insoluble, they get deposited in the tissues. Now, coming to the historical aspects of uh, amyloidosis. Amylim is a Latin word which means starch. See, the first time this particular word amyloid was used by a German botanist called Matthias Ledin. He was the one who used this uh, word amyloid or starch because he meant amyloid means starch-like. Now, in the medical literature, it was German pathologist Rudolf Warkow. Okay, he was the one who used amyloid for the first time in medical literature. He used the word amyloid to describe some deposits in the nervous system. See, these deposits showed the same color reaction with iodine and sulfuric acid. So, when you paint these tissues with iodine, the deposits turn brown in color. And when you add sulfuric acid on that, it turned blue. This was very typical of starch. And because the reaction resembles that of a starch, the word amyloid was used. Verko used the word amyloid because he thought that was starch. But in the later years, it was found that the chemical nature was unrelated to starch. But it's basically a protein. But still, the name amyloid uh, remains. Probably because of Varkov, he was considered as one of the most valued scientists of his time. They didn't want to change the name amyloid. So, this is a very interesting and an excellent article. If you want to uh, read more about the historical aspects of amyloid, you can just go through this uh, particular link. Okay, moving on to the properties of these amyloid proteins. What we need to understand is that amyloid is not a single entity. There are more than 20 different proteins which can aggregate to form fibrils. But then what we need to understand is the mechanism of formation of each of these proteins are different. So therefore, amyloidosis should not be considered as a single disease. Rather, it's a group of diseases with deposition of similar appearing proteins. Deposition of similar appearing proteins means Physically, they all look similar, but then composition-wise, they can be different proteins. Okay, we will understand what are these different types of proteins chemically. So, amyloid proteins properties, we can study under two different headings. One, the physical nature and two, the chemical nature of amyloid proteins. So, what is this physical nature? This is studied in two categories. One, by electron microscopic examination and two, by X-ray crystallography and infrared spectroscopy. These are the techniques which are used to, you know, determine the atomic or the molecular structure of these chemicals. Under electron microscopy, all types of amyloid look similar. Okay, They are continuous non-branching fibrils, which are around 7.5 to 10 nanometer in diameter. In X-ray crystallography and infrared spectroscopy, the characteristic feature of amyloid is cross-beta-pleated sheet conformation. 
See, this beta pleated sheet is a common design. It's a common shape of a secondary structure of proteins. Okay. It consists of uh, you know, the strands connected laterally by two or three hydrogen bonds. So this is the best illustration where I can explain how a pleated uh, structure looks like. This is how amyloid looks under X-ray crystallography and infrared spectroscopy. See, it is this physical nature or physical property which is responsible for the distinctive staining properties of amyloid. Particularly the congruent staining and its uh, characteristic apple green birefringence when it is observed under polarized microscopy. Okay, we'll discuss more about this later. Now, coming to the chemical nature of amyloid proteins, 95% of it is made up of fibrillary proteins, whereas only 5% is made up of P proteins, or the component P, which could be proteoglycans, glycosaminoglycans, serum amyloid P, etc. Coming to the biochemical forms of amyloid, this can be categorized into major forms and minor forms. There are three major forms, which are AL protein, AA protein, and beta amyloid protein okay the a stands for my amyloid and the minor uh, biochemical forms include trans thyretin beta 2 microglobulin serum amyloid p or sap it could be proteoglycans or highly sulfated glycosaminoglycans now let us see what are these different types of proteins so as i told you earlier one of the major protein is al protein so what is this AL protein? AL protein is basically a complete immunoglobulin light chain or it could be just an amino terminal fragment of light chains or it could be both. Okay. So these are secreted by monoclonal population of plasma cells which are most commonly found in plasma cell tumors okay, or plasma cell dyscrasias like multiple myeloma and other plasma cell tumors. The second major uh, type of protein is AA protein or amyloid associated protein. The AL protein stands for amyloid light chain protein. The AA protein stands for amyloid associated protein. So this is a non-immunoglobulin unlike the AL protein. Okay, It is derived from SAA that is serum amyloid associated protein which is synthesized from the liver. So this SAA is an acute phase protein. So we know that acute phase proteins are a class of proteins whose concentrations, whose plasma concentrations increases in response to inflammation. So this particular type of protein is found in cases of chronic inflammatory disorders. The third major type of protein is beta amyloid protein or A-beta. So this is derived from the proteolysis of amyloid precursor proteins or APP. This is basically a transmembrane glycoprotein. So this type of uh, proteins are found in Alzheimer's disease. So moving on to the minor forms, we know that minor forms are transthyretin, beta-2 microglobulin, serum amyloid P, proteoglycans and highly sulfated glycosaminoglycans. Let's just discuss what are these transthyretin and beta-2 microglobulin. Transthyretin is a normal serum protein so this is basically a transport protein okay the name trans thyretin is derived from the fact that it transports thyroxin and retinol so this type of proteins are uh, you know uh, found in serum as well as in the csf so there are two forms of trans thyretin which can be deposited in tissues the mutant forms are the ones which are deposited in familial amyloid polyneuropathies whereas the normal form is deposited in the heart of aged patients. This type of deposition is referred to as senile cardiac amyloidosis. The next one is the beta-2 microglobulin. Beta-2 microglobulin is also a normal serum protein. It's basically a component of MHC class 1 molecule. Okay, These are present in all nucleated cells. The amyloid fibril component of beta-2 microglobulin is called A-beta-2-M. This type of protein is found in uh, patients of chronic renal failure who are on long-term hemodialysis. In these patients, uh, this A-beta-2-M can aggregate to form amyloid deposits. So the other minor forms are serum amyloid P, the proteoglycans and highly sulfated glycosaminoglycans. So friends, in this tutorial, we uh, define what amyloidosis is. We look into the historical aspects of amyloidosis and then we discussed in detail about the properties of amyloid proteins. In the next uh, part of this tutorial, you know, I will talk about the pathogenesis of amyloidosis and then the classification of amyloidosis. So in that, we will discuss in detail about the different types of amyloidosis as well. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button, do comment, don't forget to subscribe because that keeps you updated regarding the update of new videos. Please do share. Thank you.